you will never live forever remember that jinn one thing you should know look at me you will never live forever you know that i'm talking to you jinn jinn i'm talking to you the one who cannot look me in the eyes the one who is in the eyes allahumma ya man ja'alta as-sihra ibtila'a fa anta bi rahmatika lan tansana wa anta jalla jalaluka alladhi khalaq الحمد لله الولي المتقين حق من عبد واكرم من سئل والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء الحمد لله هي رويا اجين الحمد لله ذا بودكاست الحمد لله مو ذا برذر هير ذا برذرز بين سفرينج فور 7 ييرز وذا سحر ان عاشق جن ذا سحر ليد تو ذا جن بيكم ان عاشق ذير ان الله نوز بس السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته how are you الحمد لله you look a bit nervous today yeah, yeah. <laughs> الحمد لله may Allah make it easy for you and may Allah remove the difficulty you're going through and i ask whoever is going to view this to make dua for you and to make dua for the believing men and women now tell me when did it start well it started six months after i started Okay that is when how old were you then 20 years old 20 mm. and now 27 28 end of this month okay you started when you 6 month 20 years ago 6 month when you started praying what did you start noticing when you start praying i felt like um things just started to get harder um to stay away from certain things okay Let, what do you mean can you exp- elaborate like stay away from like haram things and okay stuff like that i felt like slowly slowly i was just going back into some things while you're praying yeah this was so for six months straight you know i was just praying going mosque to work that's it okay like, and you were f- you were finding it difficult to go and do that no so for six months it was quite smooth for me right for six months the things just started happening and i just thought maybe i'm just falling a, a, a little bit coming back you know what i mean right and that so right. like for six months i didn't think nothing of it so the full year gone right but in the second year i started to notice things that i was doing um just going to wrong places and just doing things that I, I okay what are these wrong places can you elaborate more so just ended up going to like clubs okay um, graveyards and staying out at night going to like uh remote places like up in like tell me about this staying out in the night remote places tell me about the staying up so it's just um at night i used to feel comfortable being out at night so i never wanted to be at home in the night yeah every night every, most most of the nights i would feel like even if i finish work i just want to stay out I just which are these nights monday tuesday wednesday there was no specific there was no specific no. But you just feel like you want to say <coughs> ah see I'll go to like uh, dark places and stuff okay. go to the countryside you know okay um what wh- yeah. which place was your most common visits that you go and visit and you I mean there is a road in it but I don't want to say the road there just so okay it's fine it is okay yeah, good but it's just like uh, like I said over the countryside where you know there's no buildings and no 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 shops and okay, only places. trees yeah just trees basically yeah you stay there that w- that was a mess frequent places I to feel comfortable being there like in the trees yeah. okay that's in the night yeah. okay and what are other places that you mostly visit in the night so it used to be like a routine i used to go to clubs mm-hmm. just used to sit there and then i used to go to the graveyard from there uh, so in the c- inside or outside the club no inside the club in the club just, just sit the there just nothing or really okay and then from there you go to countryside no then i go to the graveyard then Greater, graveyard that was a common Do, okay that was reoccurring all the time graveyard yeah that was a thing it was it became a thing for me it became a, a routine yeah it was like a routine it was like a, yeah, it became normal for me so you do it in the night or in yeah, the day that night, always at night always at night always what do you do when you go to the grave so i just go there and i like being there and i can't explain that feeling but i just like being there I feel comfortable being there. I was always on my own as well. Um and I just used to like spending time there. What do you do? Just sit there. Where do you sit? In the inside sometimes your car outside? The bench. Sometimes I would uh, sit leaning on my car on the floor. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I would actually lay on the grass. And one time I still remember um I think this was one of the first times I went I was lying in between the walkway. So where the graves are and I was just looking up and I was smiling but 
not normal. Yeah, but that's you. You definitely know that wasn't you. No, hundred But the feeling. Tell me about the feeling. How you feel? Do you used to feel so much at peace, or do you feel? Yeah, it's exactly. That's why I was smiling mm. because I felt like happy being here. I felt good. I felt like this was like home type of thing. Mm. But yeah. And then you look on the sky. Yeah, that that time I remember. I still remember that time. I was just looking up and I was just smiling. Mm. I don't know what that you have no control over yourself, is no, it? Not, not when I was over there. No. Okay. For how long will it was it that you visit the countryside and the grave? The countryside and the grave. I'd say the grave thing was the grave and the clubbing thing that was very big. It was for about I'd say about three years. In a four years. In a row. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you not think that what am I doing? Yeah. Have you questioned that? Definitely. And. But it just used to, like I said, it used to feel right to me. It used to feel like I felt like I wanted to be there. I mean, obviously, I knew it was wrong. Like I, I, I knew it wasn't normal. So I knew there was things going on with me. I wasn't contemplating. Oh, is there something wrong? Or what's this and stuff like that? I knew there was something hundred percent wrong. You know, as well when I used to drink, um, I used to cut myself as well. What are these marks? Yeah. Subhanallah. Um, these are big marks. Yeah, and I used to like drink the blood. Yes. Subhanallah. There's been a time as well where I've come back from clubbing. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't know, maybe it's obviously because we don't, we don't remember things. Yeah, yeah. So these quotes, you used to quote yourself while you're in the grave. or no, you. this was like, I, w- I just feel like, I, I still remember one time I was I was in takeaway. I was working in takeaway once and I used to right. be drunk even when I was driving. Right. Um, and I was a bit thingy then. So when I used to drink as well, I used to feel comfortable. I used to feel nice. I used to feel nice and like... Um, Mellow, in a sense, mm-hmm. like spiritually good. That's yeah, what I feel. yeah. And I remember I just came out to the takeaway once. I came straight in my car. Mm-hmm. I came straight in my car, mm-hmm. and I just picked up the knife and I just started doing that cutting. Yeah, and I knew from then that that when I walked from the takeaway to the car, that was not me. And it's like I was just stood there, and one minute I just went like that straight to the car, and then just stood there and just started cutting. And then what happened? And then I used to just like drink, drink the blood. Yeah. Yeah, how how much was, how much did you drink? I mean, because you caught yourself. That's a lot of blood is gonna yeah. come out, isn't it? I mean, I don't know exactly how much, but yeah. And was it a regular thing you do? You caught yourself and drink the blood? Yeah. Subhanallah, I can see so many marks there. I've actually this has been opened up two two or three times. The same place. Yeah, the same one that has been opened. Two, I've done it over here as well. Yes, yeah, Subhanallah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi. Yes. Yeah. And so you drunk your blood. Have you, apart from drinking your own blood, have you get a thought or urge to go and drink other blood? Yes. There was a dead cat on the floor once when I came back from takeaway. And I was going to, I had thoughts in my head to take it home and to actually bathe in it. And, and, and do what? To, to bathe in okay. the cat's blood and stuff like that. S- and that thought came to my head. All right. You know, that's not normal. Yeah, yeah, th- that's correct. It was just a dead cat. I was just trying to move it off the road. Yeah. I just felt like... You take. Like did you take it? No, I didn't, no. Okay. What about, did you get any another urge like that of human being or anything to eat, drink the blood of a human yeah, being? Yeah, I do get that on, the wrong, on a normal basis. But yeah, and, until now? Yeah, I still, f- I still feel it now, but before it was very, very big. Strong. Yeah, it was big. I, used to, I felt like, I felt like I was allowed to do it. Mm, subhanallah but did you attempt to do it did you have no, an idea in the head or you or you only used to do it in your in no, just on myself on yourself subhanallah but in that time if someone did come to me yes and say you know he has clean human blood or something yes you you, know, you would have drunk it yeah subhanallah there was this time as well when i came out from clubbing and i i don't know how i don't know i don't know if i if i did bring the bottle home or not so I did bring one home and I got in the bath and you know I just turned on the bath and I started pouring alcohol in the bath as well and just sipping it and stuff like that as well. Inside that alcohol? Yeah. I used to S- like that. Subhanallah. How many times have you done that? I can't say. Mm, so many times? Yeah, I'd say, I mean I wouldn't say more than 10, that, that one. Mm, I in something under 10. Mm, subhanallah. Um, there was times when I came back from the clubs and I used to be up all night and I used to just watch the sunrise up till the sunrise mm. and i never even used to feel tired mm. you know i never used to feel like i need to be sleeping now this and that i never used to care like it just fe- felt normal to me yeah that you don't you just want to be awake 24 7. yeah yeah it wasn't all the time 
but it, what it did happen in like even if it happened a couple of times i knew that wasn't normal you know what i mean mm. um i'd say it happened about 10 times something like that the the drinking of the blood on no, the staying up okay the sunrise all right subhanallah um, like i said most of the time i used to watch it from my window i used to open my window fully the sun used to rise right in front of me yeah i used to watch it like that and i didn't feel no tiredness i wasn't drowsy you were you you had that urge to s- just sit in the window and watch the sun yeah it was just you know that there, there is a superhuman yeah there is a hadith muhammad sallallahu alaihi says the sun rises in the middle of the horns of the devil that's why look that's why we've been told not to pray that time right yeah and that's how you felt you could you could see the the things you're feeling is not normal feelings it's not feelings of a human being does that make sense subhanallah now you sleep in the grave you sleep uh, you go in the bush in the night on your own you've drunk the blood your blood and you had the feeling to eat the cat what next what was what was the pattern what was what, yani what's next after that so I mean it was pretty much the same thing it was just it became it was a routine yeah, it was a routine it became so normal for me it's like I, f- I learned to live with it I felt like it was desires of my own at the same time I felt like it was something else you know it kept on going back and forth with me what was the most uh, urge you used to get um, the, the blood one t- at one time was very bad like I, like I said, I felt like I was allowed to do it. it was, I felt it so much. I felt like if I did it, I wouldn't even get that much of a big sin. Because the urge was so big. I felt like yeah, I the blood is haram. Sin. Allah says, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالْدَّمُ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالْدَّمُ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ يعني Dead blood and the pip swine uh, is haram. Hmm. Yeah, the blood is absolutely haram to drink. Um, yeah. I'd say, but the worst thing still, the worst urge was the drink, 100%. Mm. the drink uh, like I said I just used to feel like very very comfortable being drunk it was mm. never like complete insanely drunk it was mm. more like you know tipsy or you know just always on it you know what I mean like mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I used to do it in the night time that was most of the referring it was never in the daytime but then I went through a period as well where I started doing it in the daytime as well mm. now now this is a Asher Jinn and it's a Jinn who came through magic and it's a Jinn from the grave do you understand mm. Asher Jinn normally they drive the person to commit zina and things like that. Was there anything like that with you? I mean, I just used to watch this girl on um, on TV. Right. So she's a she's a musician. Musician, yeah, that's right. And I just used to get drunk, come home, and I just used to watch her and her music videos for like hours, four or five music videos, same ones for hours. You just you used to fancy her, yeah, and that was proper, it. Proper, like, you know, anything I do bad, you know, I'd always ask Allah to guide me away from it. Mm. But with her, I could never ever do that. Those words would never come off my lips. That I felt like there was a seal there. Or um, yeah, you don't want to say, "May Allah make me stay away from this," because she's a kafir, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I couldn't even ask. Uh, just even ask even if I didn't want to stay in that state you know what I mean I would still ask mm. because it's wrong it's our weak on a human you know what I mean mm-hmm. I just can't do it but with her I could never ask it would never come off my lips to take me away from her because I felt like I loved her too much I felt like she was my everything you know as long as do you still watch her now? no I've, I've done it here and there but when I watch her I s- it's like I'm, I'm doing it you get the again. buzz straight away as soon as I see her face, yeah, you get the buzz. Away, as soon as I see her face, can you I not? Can you not think that it's wrong? So you have to stay away from it. Yes. So I, when when I first did it, I was in a I was in a cycle. It was like the it was like you know going to the clubs in the graveyard. Mm. It was this was that was a routine, mm-hmm. and this was also a routine. It's so like it's, sorry, it was like that. As soon as I came home, it used to be a thing. Switch on the TV, do this, do that. I actually had a spare TV as well. I had my own TV on the wall. And I also had a spare TV. What was it? What, you mean? what was the spare TV? Yeah, so basically, I, I used to love this feeling so much mm. of just watching her that I used to get two TVs and put the two same videos on. Subhanallah. And that's so you can watch both so of them. I can watch both of them together. Mm. I used to do that and I was so much into it. In them moments, it was, I used to call it an evil bliss. 
you yeah. yourself that's what i used to call it yeah i used to call it that was it you or was the devil calling you i want to know yeah right okay because sometimes obviously the shaitan doesn't want to he doesn't want you to know that he's there as well. that, that, that's correct that's so what that's one of the one of the major uh, one of the major illusions that people have that he make them think that he doesn't exist so even now i know 100% there which i've known about a year ago or something it still now is uh, makes me con- tries to convince me that it's just me there's nothing else there mm, that's, still to that's, now, that's a lie till this day till this minute mm. so even yeah. when doing me reading on you doing rukhya yeah even though you've done all this even yeah. though i'm still doing this astaghfirullah so many bad things mm. but you know it still just convinces me or it is saying to me that allah is not going to progress forward mm. allah, that's a lie allah wants evil for you he wants that's people, a lie he wants people to beat you that's a lie um i'm just trying to tell you yeah, 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 yeah. um allah um he's jealous of you hasbunallah ni malwakil that's absolutely satanic let me tell you something this is way to capture your mind if allah does not love you he will not guide you to islam just put that simple yes he will not guide you islam is the way forward does that make sense yeah yeah he would have not done that to you now you've already known that i have this problem and this is what is happening and that is what is going on you wait for the sun to rise the cat you wanted to go and bathe with the cat yes, the, yes. yeah graveyard how what did you do to stop all this or are you still doing it no so because i was praying as well at the same time you know, you know while you're doing these rituals yeah so i was always always back and forth i do i do something I do, I do good throughout the day. I would mm. try my best and then at night I would mess it all up and then the next day would just be like the same thing again. Good, mm. bad, good, mm. bad. Mm. You'd be constantly going back and forth. Um, me always trying myself to connect to Allah, always holding the faith up as well because at the same time it's a test as well. That's correct. Well. That's absolutely true. So, so for me, even though I knew it was there, I still took it as a test. I didn't take it as something where Allah just sent a punishment or it's just something that doesn't mean that the genie just came and that's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's correct. It was always so t- so test. Far. So my mindset was just always I keep getting close to Allah, I keep seeking his forgiveness. As long as I keep doing that, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? As long as I keep praying. Yeah, that's correct. I'm always going to be standing. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I've been on my face so many times, you know, through the drugs and the drinks and whatever. Times where I thought I and still times now, you know, I think that I could never make it, I can never get back up again. Oh, I can't do this anymore. Do you know what I mean? But alhamdulillah, as soon as I've gone back to the center of Allah, I've gained strength again. Do you know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, that's how it is because shaitan is weak. Shaitan walks on these rituals, demonic ritual, and like the rituals you you've been doing. Do you understand? He gains strength through the, through that. He gains th- strength through haram. The more you do haram, like the drinking of blood is haram. So he becomes more stronger. Yeah. And that is when he dominates the individual now this shaitan who's there the only part the only domination he has is through thought controlling the thought and you may think it's you but in fact is not you is someone else telling you what to do tell me about the rishta thing the one was playing in your head so much yeah so i actually got thought to uh, marry a jinn how did it start at first before you ended up yeah. see the thing with me is he's I mean Satan is like that anyway but he's been very like subtle with me he's he's never it's never something in my face apart from the graveyard and the club mm. and stuff like that yeah. everything else that comes to my mind I just feel like it's me mm. I feel like it's normal but it's not you but it's not me mm. but because I've been going through it for so long it became normal to me this is the thing mm. if something happened tomorrow that I wasn't doing normally then I would think straight away wait let me ring someone and ask them this you know what I mean mm. but because it became so normal for me yeah, because it's been there a long time yeah mm. I just contemplate over these thoughts and I started to believe it and I started to believe that it was somewhat possible for it to happen mm. even if it was maybe not the best thing I thought that maybe it was possible for it to happen mm-hmm. so I used to get thoughts of tomorrow a jinn subhanallah and I used to get thoughts of how I'm going to bring her home to my to my parents mm-hmm. how she's going to be in front of my friends you know all of these things like mm. I used to go over these things over my head for how long it was going on that was only a short while mm. but it stayed with me for quite a while you know what i mean this thought yeah and then i i can't remember exactly when but i mean uh, maybe a year or two later you know i, I clicked on that you know what those thoughts should be something no while you're getting these thoughts what did you think of yourself i mean i, th- I thought the situation is being something different so it was 
kind of makes me excited as well. Okay, why do you think, oh, I'm yeah. going to marry a jinn and things like that? And the, the first thought that came to my mind is, you know, she could like, you know, shape shift into any woman that I would that I would want. Oh, yeah, all right. Any woman that I would, uh, you know, want to be with. Any woman she could be like that, that yeah. She could be anything. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, At the same time, I would have some a wife that's completely different to anybody else's wife. Uh, so it became something special to me. Mm. Um, so I didn't feel bad. Like I said, again, with the blood thing, it didn't feel bad for me. I felt like I was allowed to do it in a sense. I felt like it was a bit normal. And I felt like, you know, it's just different. Mm. So you're getting thoughts that you'll have, a, you'll have a wife who's absolutely completely different right. to the normal human being. Mm. How did you swallow that how do what did you thought of that mm. yourself i mean i thought it was too much it was too extra mm. I didn't, I didn't you, you were excited anyone. yeah i was excited but i didn't tell anyone all right okay because i knew at the same time this was a bit bogus as well at the same time mm. but at the same time it was like but how did you know it was a bogus because was this was your thought your feelings no because obviously like i know that we're not allowed to get interact with jinns and things yeah like yeah, that yeah. That way. So, so you know that this was not your thought but you thought this was your thought this i just thought it was a reality okay so i knew i, I actually it was i knew that this wasn't from me i felt like it wasn't from me that that you're gonna marry yeah. a jinn yeah, and she's gonna be wake up and just think i want to marry a jinn i mean that's completely ridiculous so, that's correct um so i did know it was from something else but i it, it felt like a reality to me i felt like it's possible this is the thing it's not you know, if it, if, if it shows something bad, mm. it, it makes me feel like I'm allowed to do it. It All makes right. me feel like, you know, it's a reality, it's different, it's special, it's this, it's that. Have you, have you ever went, gone to your mom or your sister or your dad and, and told, Dad, I'm going to marry a jinn? No. See, for five Did you get that urge to do that? Uh, no. No, no. All right. Okay. Because I feel, obviously, weird for myself, so I never right. stopped me. All right. Um, but for five and a half years, I didn't tell nobody about nothing. Nobody actually knew about my situation. My friends, I put a word in here and there with them. You know, mm. maybe this has happened. I've been doing this or something like that. You know, there was actually a time when I was in takeaway and I was drunk and I wrote on my hand. I still remember this. I wrote on my arm, sorry. Um, I worship thingy. Would you say it? I, wor I worship Satan. You were okay. You wrote on your hand. You worship yeah. the Satan. Yeah. With what? With the knife? With the? No, just with a with pen. pen. No, I wrote it all over. I wrote it all over my forearm. Um, and I went to show my friend one. Straight away after takeaway, and I went and he saw it and he's like, well, What's this? But my friend's a bit scared of stuff like that, so he just ignores it. All right, okay. But he did say to me, Good, he just thought maybe because I, I was drunk, I just did something stupid. Right, okay. Um, there was also a time now that I remember as well, speaking about that was um, when I was in town, there's actually a place where you can go at the back where the stairs are on the train tracks, and mm -hmm. there's like trees there and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I started shouting, saying, I worship the devil, I worship the devil, I worship the devil. On your own? Yeah, I was on my own. In the night? Shouting this, yeah. In the night. Yeah, this is behind town, like just in a secluded, secluded area. Okay, nobody can hear it. No. I mean, they could hear it if if they were walking past on the street, because I was shouting. Right. But it was basically like you know when you go around and you go down and there's a car back at the bottom. Mm. It was basically like that. Alright, so you've been shouting, I worship the bedo, I worship the devils. Yeah. Mm, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Now, how did you proceed? How you when you start doing these stuff? And you're getting thoughts that to marry a jinn. And did you tell your friends anyway that you were gonna marry a jinn? I can't remember. I think I must I might have told one of them, but I'm not hundred percent. And how did how did he react to it? I can't remember, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um like I said, I'm not I'm not hundred percent I even told him. Mm. I think I had thoughts of telling him or something, but I can't remember. Or maybe I just said something like, you know, just to see what the, what their reaction would be. Mm. I just said something like, Imagine marrying a jinn. You know, she can shape it, shape shift into any woman. Do you mm, know what I mean? Mm. So I, I think I did say something like that, and they, I, they're all a bit scared of like the unseen or stuff. What are the gym, yeah. Engage in it. Mm. Do you still f do you still have these thoughts, or do you still fancy to marry a gym? No, because I know it's just Is, wrong. yeah. That has she appeared in front of you? She's coming by dream. W how she's come in the form of the the musician? All right, many times or one time. She's come quite a few times, and a lot of the dreams that I've had from her. You know, I knew they meant something. Okay, tell me about it. Okay, so the first dream I had about her was just, it was just from one of the music videos I used to watch. Mm -hmm. Just her all over me and, you know, spending time with me. Because I did love her. It wasn't just something where I wanted to have... You love the jinn? Well, the girl. And she right, okay, but... Okay. So, I don't know if she was acting through her. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Right. But 
uh, you know, um, I was just spending time with her because I didn't love her. It was pure love. It wasn't something where, you know, I just wanted to have intercourse with her. Is that mm. I, I wanted to spend my life with her. I wanted to be, wake up next to her. Mm. So it was just imagine her spending time with me and sitting on me and lying together and stuff like that. Mm. Um, then there's another dream where there, w- there was quite a few. I can't remember all of them. Mm. But another one was um, where she where it was on a dark road and there was trees on both sides for a long stretch. It was on a very dark road. It was just me. And I saw her there on the side road and she put in her hand out to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, like calling me to take her hand and I was inclined to go there the thing with her is like I was in a trance even now I still feel it if she was to come in front of me and order me about I w- it's like I'm wired to listen to her that's what I feel like. this, this musician yeah if she, honestly that's, that's real if I see her and she was to tell me to do things I would do it, it I feel like I feel like um, my, uh, do you know what I said? actually you know what just speaking about that I remember I used to say that her she has a piece of my soul that's what I used to say mm. that's my words that used to come out of my mouth I used to say that this this musician she has a piece of my soul because I feel like if she was to tell me to do something I would become a robot to her mm. I would do anything she wanted me to do you don't want to question it no I, I, maybe because of my iman that I have you know whatever I have of iman mm. maybe then but apart from that no I wouldn't you mm. know what I mean and I still feel a hatred towards him because of her Towards, so, towards Allah Yeah because With her I had to walk away from her And I mean Staring at the TV all the time I had to try my best To pick up all my strength To actually walk away Because um, Every time that I would think about her Not having her Regardless of whatever Allah has given me mm. I used to Think the worst of Allah And I used to become very ungrateful I used to be very ungrateful You know and But did you think it was you That you used to be very ungrateful? Yeah, and yeah, I knew that was me. That felt, felt like it was me. I don't know. Yeah, you felt like it was you. Yeah, probably wasn't. All right. But I don't know. But obviously. Do you feel like that now? Yeah, if I look at her. You no? Do you feel it that now without no, even not, looking? Not just normally, no. All right. If, if I stop looking at her, then obviously I'm not thinking about her. Yeah. So. It's but do you still think about her? Uh, the musician, this musician. Yeah, but I, I, it's more easier for me to stay away from it now. All right, okay. Because like I have more understanding of it, that's why. Yeah, you have to stay away. F- you have to stay away. This is a kafir musician. Understand? You have to ask Allah to cleanse you from this. Uh, this is a shaitan waswas. Shaitan is driving you towards that. So you have to you, you have to do what it takes to stay away from that. Does that make sense? Yeah, sorry, I didn't finish the dream. All right, okay. okay. So she was putting a hand out to me and I was going to get it. And then this big white figure... It's like a bigger than a house. It came and it picked me up and it put me on his shoulders, full white. And it started to walk with me. And it was like during the movies where, you know, she keeps reappearing on the side when you walk past her. Mm-hmm. It was literally like that. She kept on reappearing every time I went past her. She kept on putting her hand out to me. She kept on putting her hand out to me. And in my dream, I started crying when I was on the shoulder of, I think it was an angel, I'm not 100%. Mm-hmm. But it was just this, this big white, pure figure. And I, f- I was crying, you know what I mean, trying to take her hand. But this thing that was holding me wouldn't let me take her hand. Mm, subhanallah. Um, but yeah, then when I woke up, I really felt that dream. I felt it. Mm. I wasn't crying when I woke up, but I still felt the dream. And But when I woke up, I was thinking, why was I crying in my dream so much? You know, that really got to me. How, o- how long ago is that? That was, I would say, about, two, about one and a half, two years ago. Mm. Yeah. Tell me about the feeling you have and then you start shouting, looking at the sky and shouting the one you told me. That was just when I was obviously on one. Um, that didn't happen too often. Mm. That was only a one-off. What about the feeling that last time you text me, you say feeling angry, like the people are watching you and things That's, like that? That was constant. Now tell me this about was, it. This was when I came back from Umrah. Mm-hmm. So uh, after five and a half years, you know, I went to Umrah to gain some cure. Mm-hmm. Because I got recommended by some Walana. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went there for a month by mm-hmm. myself. Mm-hmm. You know, Alhamdulillah, when I came, when I was there, I loved it. I did feel s- such things like walking to the Haram. I used to feel like a bit of pain in my heart. Um, when I was in Umrah the last week, you know, I smelled something in my bed. What did it, where was that? So I just woke up one morning and I smelled something in my bed. It, was, it smelled like someone went to the toilet in my bed. Mm, subhanallah. It didn't. It wasn't normal because it made me think. You know what I mean? We're used to normal smells that happen 
day in day out mm-hmm. so I think of it but this was something where it really caught my attention that there is a, like a urine yeah it's like urine number two do you know what I mean it was like on the bed number two. or on the bed yeah it just felt like it was inside the bed and then you checked at the bed yeah there's nothing it was white sheets mm. but you feel the smell there yeah it was, it was proper there mm. um, and then when I came back from Umrah As soon as I started coming back from Umrah, the jinns were doing sihr there. It could, it could be Allah knows best. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as I came back from Umrah on the plane, I started to look for those Muslims and jinns again. As soon as I came back, I swear when I was in Umrah, you know, this is how I know that I'm not addicted. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I never ever want to do it in the daytime. Like apart from that phase that I went through before, you know, that was very bad. After that, you know what I mean? I never want to do it in the daytime. You know, I I was never like constantly hooked onto it. I never. could not go a day without it. It was just a couple of days and I feel like I have to do it. It's like I have to do it. It wasn't an addiction. I know an addiction and it wasn't an addiction. The like drugs. Addiction, yeah. It felt like something, it's like a ritual for me. So the drugs, which one was more common? The weed, the dr- the cocaine or the alcohol? So the alcohol was first. Okay. Alcohol was very big. I didn't do anything more than that. Mm-hmm. The thing with the weed, I didn't, I, I used to smoke that when I was young. But then before I started praying, I, I did stop smoking anyway. So before I was praying, I just kind of cut that off. Mm. Just to get paranoid or whatever stuff like that. I didn't like it. Mm. Dr- alcohol was very heavy, and then I'd say after about five, about three, four, four, five years, six years, six years, I'd say the cocaine started coming in. Mm. See, what really an- annoyed me about the cocaine was that I never, I actually limited myself. I said, you know what, I would never go past drink. Whatever I do, I would never go past drink. Mm-hmm. Because I felt like, you know, taking cocaine and stuff is very, like, trumpy type of thing. Mm. I never ever wanted to call up anyone and do that. And I never did. You know what I mean? What is trumpy time? Trumpy, like, uh, you know, like, trying to crack it. Like, I mean. Alright, okay. You know what I mean? I yeah. feel like something going up your nose and stuff. I feel like it's very, like, I've never wanted to take that bound. You know what I mean? Alright, okay. Drink is a drink, you know what I mean? It's, even though it's very bad, it's, it's not going up your nose like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was just my feeling. Anyway, so you start doing that? So, but it's just the way it happened, to be honest. Because like I said, I would never ever ring someone up for the drug. But I was out one time with my friends and he was doing it and he fell out of his pocket. So when, when I got dropped off home, I just felt this urge to take it. Mm-hmm. And from then, that's how I started getting onto it. St- the cocaine, yeah. sniffing it. That's how I started getting onto it. Otherwise, I would never have rung up anybody for that. I always limited myself in that sense. Because the drink was was enough for me. I didn't need anything more. I wasn't looking for the heights or the heights. I was just, I just felt like I needed to feel good. I felt like I needed to feel like buzz. But, but were you, was it you want to feel that? No, I think in that time, I don't know. The thing is, that time I was drunk as well. The thing mm. is, when you're drunk, you're still not in the right mindset of yourself, forget anything else. But at the same time, I do feel like I was influenced as well. But I can't say because I don't know 100%. Like I said, a lot of the feelings that I get, I feel like it's normal to me. And then you so feel I like this is you. Yeah, I don't know. Even the feeling of want to marry a jinn, you thought that is you. That was me. Do I you think, think it's you though? Or would you have the such feelings? The have you questioned the, the, why am I having these? The lifestyle that I was going through, mm. it just became normal to me. I don't know how, in what better way to say that. And at the same time, more than anything, regardless of what I went through, mm. I just always tried to go through Hasbun Allah and Ya'ma Rasul. So regardless of anything that I went through, I just thought, you know, someday it's going to end. Two years, three years, it's going to end. That, I just, I just that's just absolutely true. There's no situation which is permanent. Yeah. So that was that was my main focus, more than anything. Like I said, even though I was doing the bad things, my intentions were still to get close to Allah. It was never just, let me just pray a few namazes, and let me do my thing on the side, and that's it. I, w- I kind of fully submitted myself, you know what I mean? Um, by Allah's guidance. Mm, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, so it w- that was my main thoughts. It wasn't my, my thoughts for the Akhir. It was never for this world mm. after I started praying. Before that, it was normal. Yeah. But after I started praying, it was proper for the Akhir. It wasn't for this world. Alhamdulillah. So every time, every morning I'd wake up, it would be the first thing would be the Maz. It wouldn't be just something, should I pray now, should I pray later? You While know, you were doing these yeah. so drugs like and everything. So whatever I went through, my Iman was always holding me up. Yeah. So w- while you were drinking alcohol, you wake up and you go and pray. Yeah. So I would I would try to pray all my namazes first and then go drink. Mm, But sometimes I have missed namazes as well and I just end up doing it. Mm. Because I didn't care sometimes. I, mean, I, I don't think that was me as well. So mm. um, it just happened. But it became so normal for me. And like I said, more than anything, I just felt like, let me just go through it. Three, two years, three years, four years, it's going to end. 
it's going to end. Mm. And after three years, I did start to think that, you know, how much longer could this go on for? Yeah, what happened is that the, you got the thoughts of shaitan that just let me continue, it will end. But what happened is that you continue, you the more you continue, the more you become an addict, drug addict. Yeah. And then the more you're in trouble. Mm. But from the mercy of Allah, now you start questioning how long is it going to go? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm. But the shaitan wanted to put you into your place. Mm. That you're here and that's it. It's like a pattern you take. Like, look, the way you've been doing, <coughs> drinking your own blood, mm. going and sleeping in the graveyard and touching the grass and feeling the buzz and being in the graveyard, in the trees, etc. Going in the club. The, you want to drink, uh, shower with alcohol. Uh, the cat, you want to shower with the cat. Mm. This is this is madness, but these are the pattern of the devil rituals. Now, where is he going to lead you? Allah knows best. They plan, but Allah is a different plan. Tell me the thoughts you text me that you wanted to become a magician. So this is just recently. Mm. I've been wanting to. I just I don't. I mean, I know this is not from me. I know right, this straight right. At the first thought, I was just thinking that Shaitan is maybe whispering to me. So just a normal, I, mm. just, I just cut it off. But I've got a... Constant. Like, yeah, it's been, it became constant. Like I said, it's like I'm watching TV in my head. Um, Tell me about this I watching TV in the so head. I would see myself doing it. Doing what? Uh, doing magic in my room. Right. I would see myself being very big, being a magician. Mm, okay. I would see myself walking into a snooker hall and everyone being scared of me. Right. I see myself uh, with snakes and uh, spiders on me, mm -hmm. walking with it like a pet, mm -hmm. not, like in public. You know what I mean? Like thinking I was a magician, mm -hmm. and everyone was scared of me. Mm -hmm. And I used to see stuff like that, and I used to, when I used to see that, I used to feel. I c I you used see. to see that in your eyes, vision, like a TV. No, or I used to, in my head. Okay, in your head. In my head. Okay. And um, I just used to feel very powerful when I used to watch that. That when you used to get yeah. that, when I used to see that, I used to, it did it did intrigue me. You know what I mean, I did. I, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I did contemplate. It just like you know, going back and forth with it, like, yeah. should I do it? I, I would never do it. I would never do it. But it was more like the first step of just that excitement of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'd never went past that. I would never do it. Fuck You know what I mean? But I I could see in my head, and it just seemed so big, so special, mm -hmm. so different than anyone else. I would stand out. You know these sort of thoughts, mm -hmm. and it just. Um, it really, really, that one really got to me. Um, I started to feel like to ask people what their favorite color was. And did you do it? No, I wasn't gonna do it once, but I didn't do it. I did try it with someone actually because I just wanted to know if it was true. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get it right, so I don't know. All right, you ask somebody what's your favorite yeah. color, yeah. and he said something else, so it wasn't right. I did do it with my uncle once as well. I got it right on the third go, all right? Okay, so I don't know. Mm. Um, but yeah, those uh, those thoughts were very, very, very powerful. You wanted to do it mm. because you uh, you told me you because you're feeling like you're broke or something like that. Yeah, so I also wanted to do it to get money as well because because of money that you wanted to. Yeah, because there's been a huge block on my money. I can't save money at all. Um, I just spend money, and I feel like I have to spend it as well when I get it. I feel like that. Mm. Um, and I felt like I wanted to do magic to get money. Right. You know, like I said, I'm going to go back to my first point, you know, still to now, I still rely upon Allah and I still always try to Alhamdulillah, Allah. that's, that's so perfect. To me, it's a test and it is a test. That's like, correct. So for me not having money and stuff, mm. I just see it as a test. I just thought Allah was testing me, which he is still. But I just thought maybe he's just withholding from, you know, Allah withholds from you only to give you something more. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like the courts and stuff. Um, so I just used to go off that. I never used to really focus on the retired too much because then they become too big, even though I knew things were wrong. So that magician thing, that was only about three three months ago. Right. That was very recent. Um, but before before that, after I came back from Umrah, I could say two months in, this is when the thoughts in my head got very, very bad. Before Umrah, my thoughts weren't that bad. It was more physical mm. and it was more nightmares. Now it's just all in my head. All in my head. What were they saying after that? After so Umrah? After I came back from Umrah, I was just getting thoughts about these people doing this and these people doing that. Everybody watching you. And that was that was for ages. That was for like six months. Do you have to seclude yourself and things like that? 
Yeah, I mean, I was always a scripted because, person. Because when you th- th- give him thoughts, everyone is watching. What will happen? That's how shaitan drives the individual and he isolates. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the most common symptoms of shaitan is isolating of somebody. Mm-hmm. You'll find majority of the people who are possessed, they are isolating themselves. So he will cook into your head that everyone is watching you, everyone is watching you, everyone is wanting to harm you, everyone this, this. And then what happens? You start isolating yourself. Yeah. You start hiding yourself in your house. But that's the goal. That's the aim they want. Yeah, and, and I used to get thoughts about like, um, like this, everyone watching your cameras as well. So these, these people that have devices, certain bodies on the end or whatever, mm. they have devices and they can watch you on camera. Mm, so in the takeaway camera, in the shop camera, in the street camera, they can see everything. They're always watching you. Mm. When you go gym. They're watching you. They're watching you. For what though? Have you not questioned that for war? No, because mm. the thing with me, I've always tried my best to stay away from getting involved. But you have to question this. They're watching me for what? Am I a criminal? But this is the thing. I didn't want to approach them because then I was. No, no. Them. You question these thoughts. Yeah. For what? Yeah. I did, watching me. Mm. I was always on my own. Mm. I felt like I couldn't go to any monster to ask for anything. For five and a half years, like I said, I didn't mm. ask anything for nothing. I wanted to ring Malana and ask them, and you know, just to ask about my situation. Mm. I knew there was something wrong, but these thoughts were so powerful, they would convince me that it's just me being different. And for so long, I just felt like Allah was testing me with, um, with giving up a drink or something like that. Mm. But I knew it was more than that. But mm. I just, I even, someone even put a card on my window, my car window, about some rukia stuff. Mm. And I was going to ring them. I just felt like something was stopping me as well. I felt like embarrassed. I felt shy. Where was that? Sorry? Where was that? The, where was that? In Manchester, Bolton, the Preston. Card. Yes. The card was in Bolton. I was outside my house. All oh, right. Somebody put it there. I was going to ring it as well. Mm. Uh, but I don't know. I just felt like shy and embarrassed. And you're going to look stupid and you're going to look like an idiot. You know what I mean? You're going to look like a fool. Did, did, did it say Rukia in the card? Or it yeah, just said rookie, I think. Right, it just said I'm gonna help you because the people put in the cards in the in the dashboard of the person or the window of the person say we'll help you with this, we'll help you with that. No, no, because they didn't know obviously, but it was just a proper detailed card, mm. like a business card. All right. May Allah make it easy for you. I ask everyone who's watching this podcast to make it easy to make the for this young man here. Let me tell you something, yeah. The Shaitan wanted you slowly slowly take you to the road pattern for you to lose the hope of Allah yeah once you become a magician you finish you had it you had it you're in trouble does that make sense Allah says in the Quran magician will never be successful never will be successful now that thought of you become a magician and then you'll be you'll be a big time big timer you'll have money that's a lie because there's no single magician who's rich mm-hmm. no all of them all of them are living very rugged life do it. Uh, very dirty mm-hmm. so I ask Allah to destroy whatever is there and remove whatever is there tell me about the thoughts that you came out of the house and then you start looking up and I start swearing you start getting bad thoughts about Allah that Allah is is not him whatever yeah so the thoughts that I was getting in the in the, in, in the time of the six months mm. I'd say three four months in of the six months I used to get thoughts of um, you know people raping me mm-hmm. in my head mm-hmm. and I knew these thoughts were not normal I thought someone was actually doing it I thought somebody, I don't know if this is a thing, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I felt like somebody was looking at my picture mm-hmm. and doing and having sex with somebody else, mm-hmm. but looking at my picture while doing it. Mm-hmm. So it that, that's that's the khil. Shaitan has made you think like that in your head. He's, he's doing seher at is the same time. This is takhil, it's, it's mentioned in the Quran. Illusion. Black magic of illusion. You, you are. Your your mind and everything, your mind and your eyes is 
not there is somewhere else mm. which is they've done the magic there and and that is because there's a position you have a position mm. that happens to a lot of people so it's not free you can't look at somebody's picture and do that and they would feel it i'm just asking if that no you know that's magic they can do it that's, that's true. yeah magic they can do yeah. it so because what happened is that magician they take your pictures they do it the, the time they're doing it and it's live happening there mm. yeah yeah so that that was this was actually the worst time in the whole seven years, I would say, mm. because it really, really, really got to me, and I don't swing that way at all. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. And it wasn't just one person doing it; there was like five, five people in the room, and they were all over me. Mm. Like in the dream or in life? In dream, it was a vision. Okay, in my head. all right. And even when I talk about it now, I, st- I'm still annoyed. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, may Allah make it easy for you and remove you from I the difficulty. I still hate that thought, and mm. I can see myself, you know, getting raped and. You know, people wouldn't take my strength. This, this was a very, very, very big thing. Very, very. I'd say this was the biggest thing, honestly. Mm. Apart from the musician thing, mm. I'd say this was the biggest thing. It was annoying you. Yeah, because mm. this really, re- it became a reality. Like again, this is what happens. It's like every time I think of something, I feel like it's just true. I feel like I just believe it. Mm. I feel like I don't have a choice. I feel like I just believe it. Yeah, you need you need always to read Surah Al-Nas and always say I will believe in Shaitan Rajim because Shaitan is driving you through that and he's already captured. The only way him defeating you is through the mindset. Mm. He's ar- he has already programmed your mindset whenever he says you're into it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And so when while this was happening, they didn't just want to do it to me maybe because they thought I was good looking or they fancied me, whatever their intentions were, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But the main, main, main reason they wanted to do it to me was to take my strength from me. What on? Was to make me small. Well, to humiliate. To humiliate me, exactly. Mm. That did, and it really, it used to burn mm. me. It used to get into you. Too much. Mm. And, you know, I knew, th- I knew there was some sort of an issue with them. I knew some of it was true. And I do still think that some of it was true from that one. I don't know. I mm. don't know. I still do think something was true from that side. Mm. I don't know if it was reoccurring or if they did it once. I don't know. But it was... I felt like with them people, it was true because when they used to see me in the gym or somewhere else, mm-hmm. I used to feel like there was a there was tension there. It wasn't just the normal conversation. Who are these people? Go uh, white people, black people? No, no, they're Muslims. Okay. Um, Muslims, yeah, but I don't want to go too much deep about. Okay, no worries. Tell me about the thoughts you used to get about Allah, and then you looked up and you start. So this is what I'm sweating. So this when I was in, I've been in this takeaway job. I've not been able to get a job as well. I've been blocked for so long. It's nearly seven years I've been working in takeaway. Mm. Um, and when I'm driving, I can see it in my head, and it's got to me so much that I've ended up punching the steering wheel, punching the window, getting out of the car, looking over the sky, shouting. You know what I mean? Saying, "Get these thoughts out of my head." I felt like it was coming from him. In this in the, in this moment when I was going through this phase of the six month thing, um, I felt like you know Allah was doing this to me. The thoughts. It was very bad, and mm. that became a huge reality. I felt like Allah was doing this to me because He's jealous of me. I used to I used to, I, yeah. I used to, when I used to get these thoughts about Allah being jealous, I used to think what. This, mm. is, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I would blame God, 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 God be jealous of Allah, him. Allah. It comes from him. Yeah. It didn't make sense to me. I never believed it. We don't, you, we don't use the terminology God because it's not the 99 names of Allah. Mm. We use Lord mm. and the rest, the mighty, yeah. the king of kings. Allah. And, son, yeah, and Allah, yeah. yeah. So, I used to think, how could Allah be jealous He created you. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. to me, it was... He gave everything, the eyes, the vision. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It was completely bonkers to me. Yeah. And that's why I used to get annoyed because, mm. I, just, because I used to think that how can you be jealous of me? You created me. You can take anything away from me at any given moment. That's absolutely true. Mm, and I've submitted. I've never, I've never looked up and said I'm equal to you. I don't think it's nothing like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Allah is Allah. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. yeah. But it, 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 it used to be bombarded. I used to be bombarded with these thoughts. Mm. It was that bad. I felt like you know, I was just on a ship and a constant waves were just hitting. Mm-hmm. It became too big, mm. and it became very easy for me to for it to become a reality to me. So I just started to think that Allah is jealous of me and he wants people to take my strength away from me. He doesn't like that I'm maybe got strength in this way or that way and he wants to make me smaller as well. And that's why he's doing it to these people. But at the same time, he's putting the influences in these people for mm-hmm. them to look at me and think that I want it from him as well. Mm-hmm. These people are doing it to me because he's put it in them. SubhanAllah. So I, that one was that was a big reality. Um, also, the thoughts I used to get, I was read. I, you know that one. I was very, very trapped. I felt very, very trapped. Which one? 
this this these visions these or uh, these thoughts these were very i was very trapped because when i think about it now i know it's com- I, I, like I, said, I, I feel like it's a bit true but at the same time i feel like it's, it's how can it, how can it be true when you think you allah has given you everything and allah says in the quran we've created man and we know what thoughts come into him so it is not from allah it's a verse in surah al-qahf it is not from allah he says we created man and we know what thoughts mm. come to him so this is from the devil yeah allah is free from all this yeah allah is absolutely free from all this mm. and always say a'udhu billah min shaitan rajim always always when you get these thoughts say a'udhu billah min shaitan rajim allah is free from oppressing his slaves absolutely free he has said it in hadith al-quds allah has said inni haramtu dhulman ala nafsi i've made haram upon me dhulm oppression waj'altu bainakum muharrama and made haram upon you as well so dhulm is not in allah allah he is so merciful and these thoughts are not from allah it's from the devil and the devil has captured you and has put you into your place because you didn't know where to go and get help that's right yeah now tell me about the throne thing and uh, things like that so i was i also used to get and now that i think about this one i was i just think like wow what complete rubbish but you know i used to think um you know when you come out of your grave you can challenge allah for the throne subhanallah astaghfirullah you can fight him for you you, can you come up from the grave when when you dead and then yeah. coming back is when you resurrected yeah yeah so i just think like and like i said i've never grown up believing any of these things i've never contemplated yeah, but the, these things were cooking inside your head yeah, isn't it like it felt very real yeah. this is why I can't, i can't stress that enough you know what i mean mm. and and uh, probably you're gonna ask me like why didn't you just like cut the thought off or think that you know what you've never believed this you know what I mean? mm. so I, it wasn't like that but i felt like i had to believe it I felt like I just had to go through it. I couldn't mm-hmm. shake it off. You know, I used to pray the du'as, the azkars and everything. Um, while these thoughts are happening to me, constantly praying it. He says pray three times, I prayed six times. But it still wouldn't go. Yeah. It wouldn't go. What were you praying? So, Bismillah, Lillahi, 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 Lillahi. Yeah, but that's not correct. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that's not correct. That's a different. Every du'a has its own meaning. Okay. For the thoughts, You say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Because that's what Allah says in the Quran. Mm. Yeah, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Any thought come into your head. Or you read Surah Al-Nas. Right. Uh, th- and that's it. That's will you extinguish that. Okay. Totally straight away. Boom. Or read Ayat Al-Kursi. <coughs> it will straight away extinguish. So you read Surah Al-Nas. And you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. When there is any thoughts that comes into your mind the thoughts are the tool of this shaitan this shaitan al-ashr his main weapon is a thought and once he drives the person like an autopilot he drives him through the thought that person is finished it is finished because the individual now will not know who is who is this me or is not me does that make sense yeah. he will not be disti- he, he cannot distinguish who is who because he will think this is him the person doing it oh it's me who liking it for example you see somebody eating so many chocolates you will think oh what's going on there does that make sense yeah. but the person is so happy doing it but how can he eat for example one box of chocolate mm. does that make sense yeah. or eat like or drink I've seen people drinking 10 cups of tea. Mm. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm. You always have to question why what was this? Mm. You'll find people f- through this same jinni like you having it mm. making them go to the toilet frequently every second they're going to the toilet. Mm. And they go into the toilet. Now what happens? They can not the we cannot even come out. They get the urge is not from there it's not that they have we but is what is it where cooking in the head does that make sense yeah 
سو اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل اعوذ برب الناس it will destroy this type of thoughts straight away tell me about the throne thing so i to get thoughts of uh, being able to come out the grave and challenge allah for the throne i to get thoughts that the throne holds all the power mm. and whoever sits on the throne is able to wield the power basically mm, subhanallah this is one thing is that you should know one thing you should do is that learn allah's name 99 names of allah allah created everything allah is the first and is the last allah is the ever living the first and the last awwalun wa akhir lam yalid wa lam yulad he was not big nobody gave birth to him and he has not given birth to anybody and he's ever living he's a king he created khaliq this is his name the creator he created everything so no throne even the throne that the shaitan is playing into your head and telling you the throne is the power was created so allah is the one who created everything so i request go and learn the names of allah and their attribute inshallah and you will conquer this jinn this jinn is worse now the addiction that you have if you're not going to stop it you are in trouble i am telling you you are in trouble i have seen brothers who gone down i have seen sisters of down i don't know how to stop it so like i said I've you c- listen right listen listen know that this is haram okay imagine now this way just think like this for a minute if i die on that state what's going to happen Do I want to go to Jannah or do I want to go to Hellfire? Mm. What is more important to me, the Jannah or the Hellfire? Yeah. Now if you think that I cannot stop, I have to do it, the cocaine and the alcohol. Yeah. Just go and give your money to someone, your card, everything. Wipe everything from your the apps in your phone, wipe them up. Don't put them in. give everything of yours to your mom or who your sister whoever and then stay away from it you will be doing like this having ruqya being better for sometimes back again being better for sometimes back again but that's not what you want forward and back forward and back you don't want that Does that make sense? Yeah. You want to be stable. I've seen brothers who are in a uver- university until I told him, me personally, I told him, listen, I can't help you again. I cannot help you. Because I do ruqya now. The next minute, he goes and does haram. And he calls, brother, I'm regretting I did this. So look, come on, man. I just did ruqya and we extinguished the problem. And the next minute, you're back. I don't need your money. You understand? You cannot be helped. You have to think that what do I need? What's the goal? Imagine this, you having the sip and dying. You know there's a hadith. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Thalatha lam yadkhulul janna." Three will never enter jannah. And one is the one who drinks stocks uh, alcohol and the one who sells it. put that in your head inshallah and ask Allah to give you the ability to stop and ask Allah to remove the devil who's driving you crazy and ask the audience all of them to make dua for you and to remove this animal who is there who has no life but to drive you forward who came through the magic who is from the grave and who is doing torturing you واخر دعوانا وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين حتى يتبين لهم انه الحق